shield the tribe and shield Noag. Those were Chieftain Narjak's last words to his cub Akrog after a ballista bolt from the Tusk Hunters pierced right through his chest. Fabled warrior, leader of the Moon Controls, last of the mythical firstborn, killed by Elven Poachers. It was not only Narjak's heart that Bolt impaled that day, but also that of the Moonkin tribe, weakened by the terrible blood rot plague and decimated by the hunters. They had long been struggling for survival. With their mighty chieftain gone, the last ray of hope still shining was Noak, Akrog's younger sibling who had inherited Narjak's legendary power. The Chieftain's wish for Akrog to succeed him surprised many kin, but it surprised Akrog most of all. True, he was a strong and honorable warrior, but far from the Moonkin's best. All he had was the peculiar gift to hear the voices of the dead, and an iron will to do right by his sire's last words. Was he ready for this? He could not say. Yet when the tribe demands, a troll must bow. And so Akrog found himself giving his first command as a chieftain to be. The Moonkin would travel to Mugwa's Cradle, a shrine guarded by the Bonekin trolls, to perform the Devouring, the sacred ritual where the new chieftain consumed the old chieftain's heart to take up his role. This story begins the day the Bruised Tribe arrived at the Cradle, where Akrog, joined by his mentor Grunoir and his trusted one Saska, ventured out to find a holy plant for the ritual, Mugwar's Tear. Little did Akrog know that the true trial of the Moonkin Trolls had just begun. No matter what the trolls may think of Chieftain Akrog, trust not the foul tusks who say he had everything given to him on a moon silver platter. All because his sire was chieftain before him. Oh no, little cubs. The hunger, the blood rot, the hunters. The moonkin had become but a shadow, and in the span of a day, it became Akrog's calling to lead them back to Mugwa's light. The day he and his two companions went out to prepare Narjak's last rites would be but the beginning of his troubles. These the ones? Hmm. Magwa's tears. The sacred plans. Blessed by the goddess herself. Pity she always cries in hard to reach places. It was a rotten pain to get here. <sighs> One blew Magrog to embalm the chieftain's corpse for the devouring. Harm not the others. All right, and it is done. The bloom has been plucked. Back to the cradle then? Before the big little oaf Noag goes mad with worry, thinking they tumbled off a cliff? Let them march back. They have lost too much time already. Wait. Before they leave, Grangwa, well, Grangwa has an unusual wish. He would like to pluck a bloom for himself. What for? The devouring? No. It is... <sighs> the Moonkin have been running for so long, Chieftain. 
Grungwa dreams that one day they will find a true home somewhere. A tribe camp to last, so to speak. What have Mugwa's tears to do with this? Well, it may sound foolish, but Grungwa would like to hold on to that bloom and then plant it in the Moon King's future tribe camp, like a totem of hope to show how far the Moon Kin have come. But the choice lies with Agrog. After all, it is against Mugwa's laws. Can the bloom survive that long? It can. Forget not, Agrog. These are no normal blooms, but ones that brim with Magwa's hex power. Grangwa will need to take good care of it, of course. Hmm. Fine. Grungwa can pick it. Grungwa thanks the chieftain. He... <sighs> there, old fur. His precious little bloom. Zoska should not have done that. The blooms are sacred. Well, Zaska just did. And he still stands here, looking as good as ever. Now, how about they leave this place? <laughs> Fine. Back to the cradle, then. Ready for action. Head towards certain doom. Grungwa has Why stopped. Grungwa can see much from here. Grungwa has stopped. Grungwa has stopped. He will lead the way. On his way. That man's plan from the start. What? Is trusted one all right? He is. Closed. Hmm. Maybe that big stand that is open. Strange. Maybe Zarama could learn a thing or two from these ruins. Brittle bone craftsmanship never brings anything good. He is on his way. This looks interesting. Mm. It is like the other one, but this... Hmm. This works not... Can a troll not rest for a moment? 
My frog is ready. In that direction. Time to move on. Fox, look out! Krog is listening. Moving now. Pretty. Why must they plague the Moonkin? Mugwamp! Bless this flesh! They should be. Dead. Hmm. Maybe take them back for food. Ugh. Bugs are bad for the guts. Sasuke had to learn that the hard way. Huh. What now? More trouble? a hexstone. If they can kindle the... There they are. Trusted one, Herbak one eye. What is he doing here? Looking for them. The fat bone can chieftain was getting worried. The tears were harder to find than they thought. Mm-hmm. Cub Akrog, Nurbak will tell him one more time. The Moonkin should break off the devouring and move on. If they stay in this clearing for too long, the hunters will come for them. Nebok, they talked about this. The chieftain must be devoured, so Magwa can pass on his power to the chosen chieftain. Narjok would want... What Narjok would want is for the tribe to survive. But Nurbok has said his piece. It is clear the tribe would rather listen to a fresh tusk cobbling who hears voices in the wind. Sire Narjak was the last firstborn of the trolls, and the greatest chieftain there ever was. He deserves to leave this world with honor. Zaska could not agree more. If everyone got what they deserved, every worker 
would have their own iron beak. Make no mistake, Nurbok treasured Narjak like he treasures Grungwar. But Narjak was a great chieftain because he put others first. Surely Akrog knows that, after what his sire did for Nurbok and Akrog both. Akrog knows Nurbok. But what honor have the trolls left if they let these rotten brittle bones crush even their most sacred traditions? Now, can Nerbok kindle the Hexstone? He can. Oh, and Zaska Small Tusk? What? Nerbok knows the Small Tusk has been scheming. He will keep an eye on him. Then how will he see where he is going? What was Nerbok talking about? About Zaska scheming? Scheming makes it sound very bad. He will tell trusted one Akrog after the devouring. Kin should not have secrets from each other, Zaska. And Grumwar would know all about that, no? What is needed of him? Let our grog see. Destroy them! makes Akrog's hide crawl. The blood drop in the cradle it is full of Magwa's power, making life and plants flourish all around it. Pity all that power does beak shit to keep the hunters and slavers away. Is something wrong, Zaska? No, of course not. Let's By the holy hide, if it is not chosen chieftain, Akrog Bone Whisper. Cabrax was about to ask the bones if something happened to them. Chieftain Cabrax, Mogwa prays. It is true, finding the tears was harder than they thought. The brittle bone ruin was swarming with bugs. Good for the tears, bad for the many brittle bone treasure hunters who search them. Ha! Come, show him. Ah, good. Very good. Mogwa will be pleased. Now all they need is a tooth. A sacred pier stick. The bone kin have none of their own. Well, of course they do. But the moon kin will need to shape their own for their sacrifice. How can they shape a tooth? Grumwar said it. It is a sacred weapon. Just like how the Moon King shaped their other weapons. All Akrog must do is find a hex to brittle bone weapon, scrap it, then have the Moon King master scrapper use the parts to shape the tooth. Where can they find a hex to brittle bone weapon, though? Oh, there are many places in this jungle. But Cabrax believes he heard the Moonkin's master scrapper, Zaramuk, speak of a brittle bone hideout up north. His name is Zaramak. But good, Akrog will speak to him. Oh, and Chieftain Cabrax, 
Akrog is not chieftain yet, but he still thanks Kabrax in the name of the tribe. He knows many Bonekin wanted not the Moonkin so close to their shrine, with the hunters and the blood rot. Kabrax took a risk helping them, and Akrog will not forget it. Look at that! The cub has his sire's silver tongue! No, Akrog means it. Only the Bonekin can do the devouring. If not for Kabrax, Narjak would never find his way into the moonlit river, and Akrog could never be blessed with Narjak's strength. True, true. But Narjak was not only a great chieftain, but also the last firstborn troll. To give him his last rites is a great honor. And as for the fool tusks afraid of catching the blood rot, what they need most is a fat fist to the face. They should know the rot cannot be passed from one troll to another, and be glad the bone kin were mostly spared. Now off with Akrog. That tooth will not shape itself. So be it. Sharp tusks and thick hide, Chieftain Kabrax. All right. To the tribe camp. Hmm. They should look for Noag, too. Let them hope he has done nothing silly. They will. that warrior Nark needs. Um, well, he feel foolish to ask. Just speak. Well, Tamer Julog, he, um, he say anything about Nark? Like what? Well, um, there is no good way to say it. Talag, Julog's trusted one. Nark there when hunters kill him. Talag, Akrog remembers. That was many moons ago, was it not? It is true, but Nog still remembers all too clearly. Talag fight like a true warrior, and Nog by his side. But then the hunters get too many, and Nog... Nog gets scared and run. He even hear Talag scream as the hunter untusk him and... Well, no matter. Nog want to ask Akrog if Julag would forgive him if he apologized for leaving Talag. Akrog has the gift of spirits, so he can know thoughts of the tribe, no? I'm sorry. Akrog cannot read thoughts. No? But he is blessed by Mogwa, and... All the gift of spirits does is make him sleep badly and hear voices in the wind. But sometimes he wishes he could read thoughts. It would make things easier. Especially now that he is about to be chieftain. Narg should just tell Julog he is sorry after the devouring. Let Julog decide whether to forgive him or not. Hmm. Nargsi. Akrog is right. He must ask and hope for the best. Sometimes that is all a troll can do. Narg speaks true. Now sharp tusks and thick hide. Akrog must prepare the devouring. Hmm. Sharp tusks and thick hide. No little blood. Strange. Hmm. Hopefully he did nothing foolish. Ah. Old fur worries too much. Noah can take care of himself. Maybe, but he is still the Moonblood, and they must not lose him. 
they should ask Crumb. Maybe he knows something. See now. Better. Speak true, Crumb. Warrior Hikrak. He. He die. Uh, the brittle bone stab stick missed the heart. In a few sundowns, he will walk again. Good. That. Good. Ah. Elder Krongwar, chosen chieftain Akrog, hunters Aska, Mugwa, praise. Crum is glad to see they are back safely. Mugwa praise, Shepherd Crum, kind soul. How are the wounded? Not well. Nagak Tap will not live to see the next sundown. Higrak might mend, or he might not. Might not, but Crum told him he would be fine. Sometimes a bit of hope and trust is enough to heal the worst of wounds. What of the devouring? Is it ready? Almost. The bone can need a few more things. Would Crumb know where Little Blood is? Akrog went to his shelter, but he was not there. Strange. No, Crumb has seen him not. But he was very upset about their sire the whole day. Poor Noag. He still thought Ken lived forever. See if he can comfort him. He should. Though this would have happened one day. Kin dies, and there is nothing a troll can do. It is a painful lesson they all must learn. And even though a troll should treat every moon kin as kin, it is no secret that the death of a trusted one or same blood can hurt more. Hmm. Either way, they need to find Little Blood. Has Crom any idea where he went? No, but he is sure he went not far. They should look in the jungle. All right. Sharp tusks and thick hide, Crom. Oh, chieftain back? Good, good. What he need? The moon can need to craft a tooth. Can Zeramak help with that? A uh, tooth for eating? <laughs> no. The holy weapon for the devouring. They have the pointy end. They just need a brittle bone pierce stick with hex power. Cabrak said the scrappers found a brittle bone hideout up north. Ah, the cave, true. It locked, but the scrappers find shiny metal to open it. Here, uh, how it called? A key. The scrappers went in already. Not yet, because there are Eric's and other creatures. But Chieftain and Grung were strong. They can squish them. Maybe they take little Moonblood, too? He's so strong. Maybe. Speaking of Little Blood, has Zeramak seen him? Hmm, bit to go he have, but not now. Maybe he sleep in shelter? Akrog will look. Either way, they will be back with the brittle bone pier stick. Zeramak should stay ready. He will. Oh, and Slig? Best ask now. <clears throat> the chosen chieftain might be able to help Slig if he has time. Just come and talk to him when he can.
is needed of him. He is going. All right. Zeramax said the Scrapper Slig Stoutheart. He wanted to speak with Akrog? It is true, Chosen Chieftain. Slig knows this is a strange time to be asking him for a favor, but Chosen Chieftain Akrog has always been happy to help the Scrappers before. He has, it is true. And what sort of help is needed this time? Oh, the usual. Slick needs to bring back as much scrap as he can, so that he and the Master Scrapper can keep up with the need for weapons, armor, and all that stuff. He needs Akron to carry scrap? No, no. Just shield Slick while he finds what they need. He gets so carried away with Sorton that he would not even hear Mugwa's cub if it came sneaking up behind him. There is a crumbling Brittomo place southeast of here, where Slick might find some lovely scrap. Chosen Chieftain knows where Slick means. Hmm, he knows. He was there not so long ago, looking for Mugwa's tears. Perfect. So, has the Chosen Chieftain time to help Slick, just like in the good old days? He has not really the time, but... He cannot say no to Slick. What is his plan? Oh, Mogwar prays. The Chosen Chieftain is so kind. Slick will meet Chosen Chieftain Akrog outside the Brittle Bone Ruins. It will not take Slick long to find out what he needs. Hopefully. <laughs> it had better not. Akrog will meet Slick there. All right. He will see him soon. He is on his way. This way. What can he do for the tribe? What is that? Chosen Chieftain, over here! Slick, there- It was good of Chosen Chieftain Akrog to come. Is he ready to shield Slick? Not just yet, Slick. All right, but come back as soon as he can. It was good of Chosen Chieftain Akrog to come. He is ready. Wonderful! Let them see how much lovely small water's tusks! Look at this place! Slick's not sure where to start! Slick should keep his voice down. He was right not to come here alone. Akrog is sure there are enemies around every corner. A slick cannot promise to be calm, Chosen Chieftain, but he will try. Akrog likes not this place. He wonders what happened to the brittle bones who lived here. A slick cannot spend all day worrying about things like that. He has got scrap to find. Keep those Arax away from Slick. Worry not. Akrog will crush them. Just get that scrap. He will. Makes a nice change from all the thinking Slick has been doing lately. What thinks he about? <laughs> we'll tell him if he promised her. He knows Arax. Slick. About the trolls he knows. And the ones he has known. Has Slick lost someone close to him, too? Hmm. It is true. And not as recently as the Chosen Chieftain, of course. Slick likes to remember his old friend, Zanuck. Zanuck? Akrog knows not that name. They had been friends since they were cubs. Slick will never- Oh, Wars Tusks! Saramax said this was a bad idea! They must Try guide off his survive. hands! Slick! More blood oh, they will regret like getting the Moonkin!
This looks interesting. Let our grog see. That way. Moving now. Let him at them! Even the worms would not eat such a beast! They will not get away from Zazka! He will More trouble. Head towards certain doom. Sure, why not? What on Urgath is this? Should be Nerbok. Akrop too young. Also, Katuk know why they call him Bone Whisper? Cause he... Oh. Chosen Chieftain. Let Zaska get a problem. Ibrak, Kutuk. The blood for the tribe, the tribe for the blood. Elder Grafer, Chosen Chieftain Akrog. The blood for the tribe, the tribe for the blood. Hunter Zazka. I, Kutuk. I, Ibrak. How wonderful to see them. What are they doing out here? Scouting? Hmm. I, Master Anug, tell them about strange sparkles in the jungle, so they go see. Is nothing here, though? Have they seen Little Blood? Noak? He is not in the tribe camp. He not? Hmm. They see someone go through bushes up north, but they think it one of Saramak's scrappers. Now that Akrog say it, he probably too tall for scrapper. Tall sounds about right. Let them hope he did nothing foolish. Strange sparkles. What meant, Anok? Ibrak and Kutuk asked themselves the same thing. He say the air wavy, like over a fire. Grumwar, any idea what that could be? Maybe hex power. Hard to say. Green spot mushrooms, maybe. They make the nearby air wavy. Could be. It is true. Akrog heard them speak about him. Ibrok thinks Nurbok should have been chosen chieftain, and not Akrog. He... he must hear wrong. Well, that is enough to convince Zazka. Shut up, small tusk, or Ibrak will make ugly face even uglier. Kin harms kin not. Now speak true, or stay silent. What do you want Ibrak to say if they heard all? Nothing. But Akrog will say this. Akrog is chosen chieftain because Sire Narjak chose him. Not because he wants it. Make this not harder than it is. <sighs> Ibrak knows. And he's sorry. He no disrespect Akrog. It is just... The moon can lose so many. They cannot lose more. Trust Akrog. He knows. And once he is chieftain, he will do everything he can to make sure they do not. Now, another question.
Speaking of I, Master Anuk, where is he? He was not in the camp. East of the Cradle, with few others. They say Crumb's beaks find nest of Arax out there. Good for eating. What sorts? Hmm. Kutuk no sure. Let them pray to Magwa they are blood fiends, then. Their flesh is the most nourishing. All right. They will leave now. There are many things to do. Sharp tusks and thick hide, eyes. Sharp tusks and thick hide. Lead the way. way. This way? Why must they play oh, the moon? He leaves a handful for Zaska. <laughs> Zaska get five. Noag five T. Fifty. Why is Noag out here alone? It is dangerous. <laughs> Maybe for old Grumpf. No for Noag. He's strong. He is. But he's also the moon blood, and the tribe needs him. Hunter Eric was killed by a wild wyvern just a few sundowns ago. But Noak, not Eric. And tribe like Noak, cause he's strong. How he can stay strong if he always hiding in his shelter? be strong on his own, too. There is nothing the moon can respect more than a warrior who can crush five brittle bones alone. Just look at Nurbok. Big blood, true! And not just five! No, I'll crush them all! Every last one! And then it builds shelter from their bones and feed their flesh to the moon kid cubs! Mugwa Septic utters, Noag. Take a deep breath. The hunters are not here. But will be! And if Noag been stronger last time, Sire would still be here and, 
Sire is dead. It is. Everyone say Noak Moonblood. Noak blessed because he's so strong, but he not. When hunters came, he can do nothing. 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 And neither could Akrog or anyone. Noak is a Moonblood, it is true. But Sire was a first blood. Ten times stronger than even Nurbok. It is good to grieve kin, and it can be good to be angry. But Little Blood must not let this anger turn into despair. Else he will one day do something bad. Sire always say the same thing. Big Blood right, Noag sorry. He be calm now. It's all right, Noag. They all understand. So, he just went out here to show the tribe he is strong and to unleash his anger? No, not only. He needs something from the Eric. It's... how say... guts? Should Saska dare to ask why? It's a surprise for Crumple Noah make with Zeramak. Noah can take guts, big blood? Sure, but he will accompany them afterwards. It is better this way. No one here! Let our grog see. Wrap them! They go back to Zeramak now? Soon. something, but Moonblood, Magua prays he's safe. Zeramak no see him since sunup. Where he go? Well, of course, Noak safe. He Moonblood. He go out in wild and fight Aragut and get stronger. Ah, that good. The Moonblood needs be strong. Little Blood, he wanted to give Zeramak something. It's true! Here, Noag found it! Ugh, it's so sticky. Smells as nice as it looks. Mm, true, could work. Uh, can Chieftain give Zeramak moment? Hmm. Ah, uh, look, look, look! Pretty! Like Zeramak. What is this? A hammer? A song bone. Like green skin slave drums. But this one makes long sounds like uh, an iron beak's call. They mean music, it is true. This is for Crumb then, Noag. What is the occasion? <laughs> they see. All right.
Markovnuk. Slig. Akrog is glad. It was a close one, it is true. Akrog was supposed to protect. No need to be sorry. It is kind of. Slig is sure. Akrog would like that. Sharp tusks and big hide, chosen chieftain. More trouble. Akrog is ready. Can a troll not. Ah, chieftain back? Good, good. What he need? Akrog needs Zeromak to shape something. What he need? Ah, oh, chieftain back? 
Good, good. What he... Akrog needs their... What he need? <sighs> Granwa is here. Can Zaska help me? What should he do? Granwa is ready. Service. He is going. This looks Where evil. was Snow Ike? He makes something for Crumple. He... Um, just show him, Noak. He will like it. <clears throat> he, a song wood. No, a song bone. But how did Noak make this? And why is he giving it to Crumb? Zarabak helped Noak make it, and he, well, Crumple always helped Noak, just like Big Blood, Zaska, and Sire. Noak wants... he wants to ask. <laughs> oh, spit it out already. He wants to make Crumb his trusted one, no? It true. That is very kind of Noak. Crumb will gladly be Noag's trusted one. Well, it is settled then. Shepherd Crumb, kind soul, and Moonblood Noag just struck the bond. Noag, Noag, thanks. He will be good trusted one to Crumple. He... Calm, little blood. He can speak with Crumple again later. There is... His same blood is right. But Crumb thanks Noag again. He will start making sounds as soon as he can. If these old fingers allow it, that is. What can he do for the tribe? <laughs>